A very warm welcome to everyone who is joining us for today's Euraxis Worldwide session. A uh, warm welcome to all of you joining us from Southeast Asia, everybody who is joining us from Europe and wherever you may be, thank you so much for checking in today. My name is Susanne Renzovasu. I am part of the Euraxis Worldwide team here in Southeast Asia. And I'm joined by my colleague, Jenny Elmaku, who is behind the curtains today to manage our session. And as you can see, um, despite all the current restrictions, we've been trying to make this as interactive as possible. So we've created this virtual conference setting for you to talk about a particularly interesting opportunity for bi-regional collaboration. What we're talking about is the Southeast Asia Europe Joint Funding Scheme, also known as JFS. And uh, I know that you've seen that this scheme has just launched its seventh call a few days ago. And today we are joined by the team of the JFS. They're joining us from Germany and they are here to talk to us about this opportunity for researchers, scientists, innovators from both regions to come together and work on joint projects. The JFS call is currently open for projects in two thematic areas. The first one is climate change and the second one is sustainable food production. And in the next 45 minutes or so, you will hear from our presenters from the JFS about this particular funding scheme and, of course, about this specific call, how you, based in ASEAN or based in Europe, can join forces and apply for this particular program. Now, before I hand over to our presenters, just a, a little bit about proceedings. As I said, we're trying to make this a virtual conference um, experience for you. We're currently on the stage and you will hear from Adele and her team in Bonn in a minute. You can always ask questions. Also for everyone who is joining us on Facebook, just send us a comment on the Facebook settings and we will make sure that the JFS team can respond to you. For everybody who is inside the hop-in session today, you use the Q&A segment that you can see on your screen and send us your questions there. We will have time for Q&A and then more importantly, after the presentation, we will all have the opportunity to get to know each other a bit better in the networking session. So don't touch anything on your computer for the time being. We will later on invite you to go to the networking segment of this session today, and there you can meet other people that are joining us in this session today. You will be given about three minutes where you can talk to your counterpart. You will be paired randomly by the system. And don't forget to click on the little prompt on the screen that says share contact details. That is basically like being uh, in a coffee meeting and you're exchanging business cards. So at the end of this session, you hopefully have a good a pile of virtual business cards. Now, enough from me. As I said, I'd like to introduce you to the JFS team and our key speaker today is Dr. Adele Clausen. She's the manager of the JFS and together with her colleague Wu, they are going to tell us all about the JFS and how you can participate. Adele, the floor is yours. Thank you, Susanna, very much for this introduction. I'm very happy to be here. It's a uh, first time for me to use such a sophisticated tool for uh, interactive uh, communication, matchmaking, networking. Uh, very nice um, that your access gives, uh, gives us the chance to present our scheme here. Um, uh, as Suzanne already told you, I'm the manager of the joint funding scheme and I'm very happy to give you some um, detailed information about our just uh, recently launched seventh call. We are happy that um, you get now the chance to, to meet other researchers and to maybe set up your own consortium to participate in that call. But in order to make sure that um, 
yeah, everything goes well with your um, application. If you're interested in our call, I would like to give you um, some details um, about the call, the scheme itself, and also about the different procedures uh, once you decided that you want to apply for uh, funding through the joint funding scheme. Um, I think yeah, I'm sharing my slides seems to be working quite well. So what is the joint funding scheme actually? We are implementing joint um, calls for proposals on an annual basis. So typically always uh, in summer uh, around June, we launch our calls and we are funding research and innovation projects. Uh, the projects, they are funded through, funded through national or also local funding agencies that are participating in the Southeast Asia and Europe joint funding scheme. And the whole program is actually uh, initiated and coordinated by the European Commission. So the European Commission, Commission is um, paying actually for the coordination of the scheme and the um, local and uh, national funding agencies are paying for the research projects that are implemented. The topics of the course, they are different every year and they are jointly selected by the participating funders. Uh, the management of the joint funding scheme is um, actually implemented through the so-called service facility of the European Commission. And um, I'm part of the service facility uh, and I'm not doing that on my own. I have a big team behind me, uh, which helps me to implement all the different activities. And uh, one of the important partners is my colleague, Wu. Uh, he will later on also give you a short introduction into our submission tool. But it's not only Wu and me, uh, we have also partners in Southeast Asia. We have um, the COIL Secretariat hosted actually by DP in the Indonesian Science Fund. We have Ms. Fina Yaligo, my, um, my dear colleague, uh, who is the Senior Program Officer in Indonesia, hosting the COIL Secretariat. And she's um, supported by Adam, who is also uh, always available for anybody who has questions. Uh, and we have now also um, support from NASTA from Thailand, from the National Science and Technology Development Agency. Um, we have there Ms. Lily and um, De and Goy. Um, I think it's okay for them if you use their nicknames. That's a um, yeah, kind of tradition in Thailand and makes it easier for us um, to not needing to pronounce uh, names that are comparably complicated for some of us at least. Um, yes, and they are available for you if you have any questions as well. What have we done until now? We have launched six calls in the past and we have received 178 research proposals. We have um, selected 42 proposals for funding. So these projects are currently implemented, receiving funds through the joint funding scheme. And um, we have actually 18 countries involved until now. You see that on the map. What are the countries that are funding projects already? We have further countries um, that join for our current call, for the seventh call. So I think now we would have to, to, um, to increase that number to 20 countries involved. And we are currently... Um, supporting the projects with 14 million euros of funds. We have, as I said it before, the different uh, thematic areas, which are um, always selected by the funders that are participating in the calls. In the past, you can see we have a really a wide bunch of topics that have been covered already. Uh, strong focus was uh, on health related issues, but we have also environmental topics like climate change, integrated water resource management, bioeconomy. Um, we had nanotechnologies uh, several times. And as Suzanne already um, mentioned, this year we have climate change and also sustainable food production as a topic. You can see also that um, yeah, there are many projects funded and, and as we have all 
always more than one partner in a project. Um, we have many countries with many projects um, that are already participating in the joint funding scheme. Uh, if you are interested in the joint funding scheme, there is one very important thing that you need to know and that you need to follow. We have a so-called two plus one rule. And that means that each project that receives funding through the joint funding scheme needs to be bi-regional. So it needs to involve Southeast Asian and European partners. And it has to be a multilateral pro project. So we need a minimum of three partners. That means actually that um, from Southeast Asia and from Europe must be one partner eligible for funding through the joint funding scheme. And on top, you need a third partner. It's, um, it's both okay. It can be from Southeast Asia or from Europe. This partner can also receive funding, but it's not a requirement. So it can also be a partner that is not eligible for funding through joint funding scheme, but it brings his own funding. You can always um, add further partners. So there can be, uh, there's actually no limitation to the number of partners. Um, for those partners that are from non-participating countries, they need to bring their own funding. The coordinator of a project always has to be eligible for funding. So that's one important thing as well. Um, the joint funding scheme, it's open to all funding agencies from Southeast Asia and from Europe. And the funding agencies, they actually contribute to a so-called virtual common pot. But uh, one important issue is also that we have no money crossing borders. So if, for example, a Thai funder decides to participate in the call, he will assign a certain amount of money for the funds. But this money will be used only for the Thai researchers. The same goes, for example, for Spain, Spanish researchers. They will be funded through the Spanish funding agency. We have uh, only uh, actually three exemptions, and that's for Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar. We are very happy that these countries are on board as well. Uh, the budget is limited for these countries. So um, in order to, to allow them to also travel and uh, visit their partners, it's possible that there is some cross-funding for that kind of activities. The details for the funding, they are laid down in the national regulations. The national regulations are very important for you. If um, you visit the website, you can find a link to download the national regulations and you can read also the details for your funding organization that you have to follow to receive funding. What are the benefits of our scheme? The benefits are, I think, um, especially that we you have access to so many different countries and researchers that you can collaborate with. It's not a bilateral scheme where you are limited to one other country. We don't need to have like bilateral agreements between all the different partners. It's just one scheme and we have this big bunch of um, partners and funding agencies involved and you can set up very diverse research consortia and get linked to new research partners from, the bo from both regions. Uh, I would like to give you a short overview of what we have done in the past. The joint funding scheme was actually launched in 2017. I have joined as a manager in 2018, so since three years I'm on board as well. And uh, we had a first period, that's the joint funding scheme one. It was finished in 2018 after the second call and the European Commission and also the different funding agencies, they uh, decided that this uh, tool, this scheme is so valuable that they want to continue. So that's when they set up the joint funding scheme two and decided to have actually four more calls um, with two calls being launched in parallel in 2019 and two calls in 2020. And what they said that on top, they want to have also further activities like um, matchmaking events in Southeast Asia and Europe. So we have done that. We have attached to conferences, matchmaking events, and we have uh, seen that very interesting new partnerships have been um, created in these events. We have set up, um, that's uh, also, I think, very interesting for you, a joint funding scheme partnering tool. 
this partnering tool is available on our website. I will come to that also later in my presentation. And um, all this was very successful. We have an increased number of uh, partners. We have an increased number of budgets. So we decided that um, actually we want to have also a seventh call, even though the joint funding scheme tours are close to coming to an end. Um, but yeah, uh, we are very, very uh, happy about the success of the program. So we made it possible to have a seventh call in that kind of interim period when joint funding scheme two is coming to an end and hopefully we will have a joint funding scheme three being launched soon but let's come to the seventh call which is actually i think the most interesting for you because it can give you the chance to receive funding um, we have two new partners i mentioned before um, compared to the past we have now also partners funders from malaysia from Un university malaya and from University Putras, Malaysia, and we have on board the Netherlands with NWO. So I'm very happy to announce that we have these new funders on board now. The topics are sustainable food production and climate change, resilience and adaptation. I think that are two really very important topics for both regions and very good chances to collaborate. Um, Southeast Asia is hit by climate change, but not only Southeast Asia, uh, we can experience it here. Germany uh, also, I'm based in Germany, so that's where, where I have my experience from. And it's just last week we had almost 40 degree, which is not usual for June in Germany. I can tell you that's something new. And um, we have a problem of not having enough rain since like three or four years. Our forests are uh, starting to, to, to be uh, hit by that drought and uh, they are dying if you go to the forest. Uh, sometimes uh, 30 40 percent of the trees are cut so we see that's a very very important topic uh, and i think there are big chances to collaborate between the two regions and that's also true of course for the food production so we have already a very big uh, cooperation import export between the two regions in terms of food and i think we can learn from each other to further improve for the um, future i mentioned before that um, yeah, we are focusing even more on linking Southeast Asian and European researchers. So uh, we have the partnering tool. It's available on our website. So if you visit our website and you select the partnering tool, you can register. It's quite easy. You can set up a profile and uh, we will approve your profile and you get access to all the other researchers that are already registered. And we have we are receiving new um, registrations every day. So there's quite a bunch of researchers already on that um, tool. We have lab exploration tools that will come soon. We will inform you about the details also on our website and of course social media. And uh, we have dissemination and matchmaking events like the one we are having today. Here you can see a list of um, funding organizations that are participating in the seventh call until now. The call has been launched uh, 15th of June, so that's uh, actually exactly one week ago. And um, yeah, it might even be that we will receive more funders joining. Uh, sometimes that happens uh, last minute that they come in. So we are in discussion uh, if there is a chance, for example, for Vietnam to join. Um, so it's always good to, to check our website for updates um, if there are further countries joining. But until now, we see that we have like eight um, countries from Europe and eight countries from Southeast Asia, some of them even being represented by more than one funding agency that are participating in our call. The call has been launched 15th of June and it will be open until 15th of October. So that's a very important deadline for you. Um, because that's the latest uh, point of time that you can submit your proposal. After that, we will check your proposal for the quality. Um, it will be a peer review by uh, experts. We will have a scientific council that will double check all the proposals and the evaluations. And then we will have a funding decision, um, which is a joint decision between all participating funding agencies. Now let's uh, get a bit into detail into the possibility for you to sub 
bid a proposal. We have actually three steps that you should um, go through if you want to submit a proposal. So first thing that you should do is uh, check our website and check the call. You have there the details, for example, the topic is uh, explained a bit more in detail what it may cover. Um, after you have decided that, for example, your country is participating, your topic is covered by our call and you want to um, you want to submit a proposal, then it's time for you to set up your project consortium, which is the second step. And once the consortium is set up, then the proposal has to be submitted in our PT outline tool. Um, yeah, I said it already, you, you have to make sure um, that the call details match your idea. So really make sure that thematic area is um, covering your project idea and that the country is participating. So um, if you if you are interested in the scheme, just visit the call text on our website and you will have the list of countries that are participating and you can download the national regulations of your country. And it's very important that you read that national regulations because it will tell you like um, what is eligible. Is your country participating in both topics? Sometimes they participated only in one. What kind of institutions can be funded? What kind of cost categories are eligible for funding? What are the funding limits? And also very important, is there an additional national registration or submission procedure? So once all that is um, okay, you checked it and you decide that you can participate, uh, you can submit a proposal, you're eligible for funding, then set up your project consortium. I mentioned it already that we have the two plus one rule. I uh, explained it here again because it's um, one of the most challenging things, I think, of the joint funding scheme. We very much like this rule because it gives us, uh, yeah, or it gives you the chance to create very diverse project consortia. But at the same time, it's also a bit a challenge to meet all the two plus one uh, requirements. So. If you're from Southeast Asia and eligible for funding, you need to have at least one partner from Europe that is also eligible for funding. And then you have to find a third partner, which is either from Southeast Asia or from to be eligible for funding. Can be, if yes, very good. If not, he or she has to bring his own budget. Um, Again, the partnering tool, um, if you're searching for partners, for example, you have one partner, you're searching for the other partner that uh, you still need to, to meet up with the two plus one rule, just register in our partnering tool and you will have the chance there to set up your own researcher profile. You can even create your project idea and project partner requests. So you can specify it uh, pretty much in detail what you need. And at the same time, you can also search and filter all the other researchers' profiles and project ideas and partner requests. So maybe even if you don't have a specific idea for that call, um, you can register and see maybe someone else is looking exactly for you and um, that can help you to become part of a consortium. The submission of the proposal will be through PT Outline. That's an online submission tool. And that's where I would like to hand over to my colleague Wu, who is the uh, absolute expert now in PT Outline. And he can um, give you a few words um, for, the, yeah, for the procedure of submitting your proposal. Thank you, Adele. Hello, everyone. I'm Wu. I'm uh, working for the management team of joint funding scheme and now I want to talk about the submission procedure on PT outline well as you uh, as Adele mentioned PT outline is that tool that online tool we use for um, receiving all proposals so it is important um, to upload and enter your all your information and data in this online tool. Um, the joint funding scheme do not accept um, applications or proposals that are not um, uh, submitted by PT Outline. Um, 
the link for PT Outline you will find in our website of the Joint Funding Scheme. And um, there are four uh, steps, four steps for the procedure on PT Outline. Next slide, please. The first one is to sign up in PD Outline. Um, for signing up, you only need to enter your email address and you will receive an email from PD Outline where you will get a link and separate link for complete registration. In this registration, after you registered successfully, you will see in that blue box your password. This password is automatically uh, created and it is important to remember this password but you can change your password after login in PT Outline. Next slide please. After um, login for the first time you will see the data protection policy by joint funding scheme in PT Outline. Um, we as a, a UU um, project with the ASEAN we need to uh, your, we need to comply with the EU general data protection regulations. So it is really important um, that you agree that um, your personal data are transferred um, in order to um, proceed your application. So before proceeding, um, you need to um, give us your agreement. After that, you will um, proceed to the main page. Next slide, please. Yes. So after you um, agreed with the policy uh, data protection, you will um, land on the cover page. On that page, on the left side, you will see an, um, a menu box with six menu items, which you can see here with overview, general information, principal project coordinator, project partners, upload project description, and propo proposal submission. Uh, in order to uh, submit your um, application, you will go through all these um, menu items. You can see here in slides, for example, general information. So you need to enter your um, project title and project acronym. So it is important to um, that the project coordinator, who is only um, who is the only person who enters the um, data and upload all the documents on in PT Outline, um, get all the information from the consortium partner. He is all, um, he or she will also um, enter the project partner's details and. Um, so before um, getting into the submission procedure on PD Outline, um, please make sure to get all your information from your partners so you don't have to wait too long in the pro uh, submission procedure. Um, under the menu box, you will see another box uh, named Outlines. Um, this a combination of numbers and um, letters is um, the idea of your outline. So you can identify your outline in this with these um, numbers. Um, next slide, please. Um, another thing, another important thing is to um, download the template on PT Outline. You will see that in the section of Upload Project Description. It is a Word document. Um, please download this document and fill in all the um, information required in this document. Um, you also need to attach the CVs and letter of intent in this document. And uh, at the end, um, you need to convert this uh, document into a PDF file and upload it again in this section. And uh, it will be um, submitted with the application. Um, next slide, yes. Um, after you um, filled in all your information and uploaded your project description uh, file, you will get into the 
section of process submission. In this section, you will can download the data sheet preview. So before um, submit your proposal, it is important to um, download this preview and check all the information you entered. Um, it is important also to um, send this preview to your uh, consortium's partner so they can check as well if every uh, information is uh, right. If something is wrong, in this stage, in this point, you still can change um, your details in the proposal. And you also can see an overview about the total project cost that you um, expect and the requested funding. Um, after um, checking all the information in the data preview, you need to verify the submission. So in this stage, the sub, uh, your proposal is not submitted yet. yet. After verifying, um, there will appear a new button with submission, send submission. And you need to click that button. And after, after that, you will receive an email from PT Outline with the confirmation of your successfully submission of your proposal. It is important to check your emails after submit your proposal. Otherwise, um, if you did not receive that email, um, you need to check if the system was working well or you can contact us because this email, in any cases, if you get that email and your proposal um, got a problem, you will uh, have a, a confirmation email and proof that you submitted it on time. Um, yes, I think that was all from my side. Yes. Thank you, Wu, very much. Um, I think you made it very clear how to submit the proposal in PT Outline. So um, once the proposal is submitted, we will manage the proposal. We will um, first have an eligibility check, uh, call secretariat and national contact points of the funding agencies will check if all the rules are complied with. Um, and then there will be the expert evaluation by online evaluators of your proposal. So you will have at least two experts evaluating your proposal. Important for you is um, the criteria. So um, they will evaluate the scientific and technical excellence. They will also look into the potential impact of um, the project activities you're proposing and also looking into the marketability. And then we have the third criterion, which is on the management and especially the transnationality. So is, is your consortium a well um, distributed um, consortium with, which is sharing work um, in equal parts, something like that. Um, after the online evaluators check the proposal, there will be like the um, second uh, evaluation step by the scientific council. They will double check all the proposals. They will also check the evaluation. So to make sure that all the proposals uh, benefit from a fair evaluation. And um, after um, the scientific council sets up a so-called ranking list, the um, joint funding scheme program steering committee members from the funders, they will um, meet and they will take the decision whom to fund. We are, of course, following the quality. So we try to fund the best, um, the best uh, proposals and at the at the same time, we are also, um, yeah, we have to see how much budget is available. So that's the second issue we need to take into consideration when taking the funding decisions. Um, yeah, we have uh, yeah, many activities apart from the call itself. We have, uh, for example, we are launching a so-called joint funding scheme video tutorial quite soon. I expect it actually um, by next week. Uh, we will have further networking and matchmaking events um, 
as I mentioned before, there will be a so-called joint funding scheme lab, lab exploration tour. Uh, sometimes we have new funders joining last minute, um, still in the seventh call. And also, of course, we intend to have further calls being launched in the future. So if you want to be updated all the time, of course, you can visit our website, but you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And um, then you will automatically be informed about anything that's going on with the joint funding scheme. And um, yeah, no need to, to check the website all the time, just be informed through the social media. And of course, um, register in the joint funding scheme partnering tool is very valuable chance um, for the joint funding scheme activities, but maybe even beyond. So we, we also see that people meet each other and they are, um, starting activities that are not covered by the joint funding scheme, which is also very good. So we, we want to foster the cooperation between the two regions and not only limited to the joint funding scheme. That is it actually from my side until now. And I think um, we are quite good in time so um, that we may answer the questions. And I, I have been uh, screening a bit the chat. I think there are a few questions. Um, so I would like to, to hand over to Suzanne. Uh, maybe she has the good overview of the questions and um, I'm available to answer. Excellent. Thank you so much, Adele and Wu. Uh, in fact, yes, you're right, questions are coming in. First of all, a lot of people are asking whether they can access the slides. And yes, I'm sure that Adele will kindly share the slides with us after today's session, and we will make them available uh, on our various websites. You will receive uh, an information uh, where you can download the slides. So I'm sure that is no problem. But yes, let us look at some of the questions that are coming in. If you do ask a question, maybe you just add uh, your name and where you are based. That is always interesting for us. So the first question is from Dr. Belal Muyadin, who is uh, based at University Putra, Malaysia. And he is asking about um, the call on food and he's asking sustainable food production. Does that topic also cover food waste recycling for the production of foods? Is that also included in that topic, Adele? Yes. I'm, uh, my background is uh, waste management, actually. I'm, uh, I studied waste uh, engineering and I did my PhD on that. And I would be very happy if um, proposals are handed in also uh, covering that, like um, actually closing the circle. Um, we are considering the whole food chain. So we are happy for any, any part in that food chain to be optimized. And that's, of course, a very important link to have like the, the residuals, the waste um, also being used. And uh, if that can be used for new, new food, it's very good, of course. And yes, that can be covered as well. Well, thank you, Adele. Um, maybe we quickly stay in Malaysia. There is a question from um, our colleague Moritz Müller, who is based at Swinburne University. Now he's got a question about the eligibility criteria now. So he is not uh, based at one of the Malaysian institutions that are, have pledged funding. How is it? Can his uh, team also participate? How could they secure funding, Adil? How is it for institutions, other institutions in Malaysia that are interested in joining this scheme? Um, the thing is that um, it's the first time for Malaysia to, to be part of the Southeast Asian Europe joint funding scheme is the first call they are participating in. And um, I worry that for this call, um, it will be a possible only for researchers from UM and UPM to really receive funding through the joint funding scheme. 
um, we are in in touch with uh, with a person from UM, and she is actually also managing larger funds. And she says that in the future, if this call will be successful in the future um, they may offer funding for um for more malaysian researchers not limited to the two institutions but i am very sorry i think for this call it may not be possible yet to directly receive funding that does not mean that you cannot participate in a consortium um, but you would have to find your own funding, uh, maybe your university, that's what I learned that in, in Malaysia universities, universities have funds that they can spend for their researchers. Um, and um, maybe your university has uh, a fund and an interest, an interest of you participating in a consortium and if the other two partners are eligible for funding it's still fine that you join the, um, the consortium but you would have to somehow bring your own funding. Okay, thank you so much Adele. So maybe it's uh, as, as we heard it's probably always a good idea to keep lobbying your own institution and uh, uh, encouraging them to get in touch with the JFS management to uh, kind of express their interest and support in, in being uh, a participating partner. Now, the next question here is from Kampanat Silva. And uh, this person is wondering if you have a little bit more details about the evaluation criteria. Is there something that uh, researchers that are thinking about submitting a proposal can access online, that they can study the criteria, how each proposal is going to be evaluated? Um, yes, uh, in the call text it is described. You can also see the, the three criteria and you can also see the weighing of the criteria. So um, the, the first and the second criterion are more um, important than the third criterion of the transnationality. Um, in terms of the scientific council members, they are, um, you know, we have a so-called first reader and a second reader. So um, first reader and second reader will read your proposal and up to four or five, six other proposals, and they will um, compare to see if the evaluation is really fair. Um, they will pick up the strength and the weaknesses of your proposal, sum it up and present it to the whole con scientific council. And that will be the basis for setting up the uh, ranking list. One thing that might be interesting for you is that um, after the online evaluation, that um, the excellence, the impact and the transnationality are evaluated in, you will get the, um, the chance to uh, comment on the evaluation. So the results of the online evaluation will be sent to the coordinators of the project proposal and they um, can give, a, give their statement on that, um, maybe also add further information if something was not clear to the evaluators and this will be considered for the final um, scientific council ranking. But um, that will be an uh, automatic process. You will uh, you will be uh, contacted with the results of the online evaluation and asked to, to give your comment if you wish. You don't have to give your comment, but you get the chance to do so. It will be also through PT Outline. So everything will be through that online submission tool. Thank you so much, Adele. Now we have another question from someone following us on Facebook currently. This is Omar Farouk, who I believe is also based in Malaysia. Um, Omar is asking about the rules of co-financing when you have to bring your own funding. Is there a particular guideline regarding the minimum amount um, of co-funding and uh, whether this would be co-funding in cash or can it also be in kind as an access to uh, research facilities or, or, or uh, comparable things? Um, the procedure is that we request a letter of intent from that partner that is not eligible for funding, stating that they are interested 
to join the consortium and that they are willing and capable of um, contributing as described in the project description. And um, in terms of like the share, we don't have rules. We don't say like there must be like minim minimum of 30% uh, contribution or something like that. Um, it can be in kind. Um, that's, for example, what Lao, Myanmar, and um, Cambodia typically do, that they provide in-kind contributions. Um, it's important, uh, two things. Uh, the first thing is that um, if you have only personnel and you cannot travel at all, it may be difficult that you join meetings. So that's an issue that you... Um, you would have to take into account and make sure that you can be part of the consortium and um, yeah, just join important meetings. I mean, now with COVID, uh, we are very experienced in virtual meetings. It's uh, getting more and more easy to be part, um, even though you're not traveling. The second thing is that um, uh, this uh, third criterion is the transnationality and the management of that. Um, we have seen several proposals in the past where we got the impression that there is one partner having a very little contribution, which is not really essential for the project. So it would be important that you play an important role in the project. That's something that we evaluate. And um, if that's not, if someone has not an important role, it's a, because it's just too small and not small does not mean it's not much money. Small means it's not important and relevant. Um, then it's uh, it will be uh, graded lower, but um, we are not limited in the budget. So if we consider your contribution is important and benefiting for the proposal for the project, then it's um, okay. We don't have limitations on the budget. Or requirements. Thank you so much, Adela. Now there's a, another question uh, from a participant joining us from Twente University in the Netherlands, Dinand Alkema, who is asking whether it's possible for uh, an institution to submit two different proposals, those being with different themes and different partners. Would that be possible? Yes, it's possible. We also have no limitations on that, so you can submit. We have, um, I think, in PT Outland, you will have to um, inform us that there are several proposals that you're submitting, but it's okay, you can do so. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, funding is what people are particularly interested in. So I'm just kind of summarizing the question here regarding funding. Is there, what is the ceiling? Would, uh, would we have to understand it that the maximum amount of funding that the particular funding agency for a specific country brings in, that's the ceiling of what the research just can apply for? Yes. So um, I know it, for example, for Germany, because I'm also involved in the joint funding scheme as the national contact point for the German funding agency. I know that um, researchers can request a funding up to 150,000 euros for one project. So that's the limit, and um, there will not be any chance to receive more than that. But that's different to, to any um, funder, and that's laid down in the national regulations. So we have seen in the past, for example, Switzerland, we know it's a very expensive country, and they are also providing higher amount of funding. But then there are other countries which have um, lower, uh, lower caps and it's just uh, important that you read the national regulations that apply for you. And um, it's also important to understand that um, if you're, for example, from uh, Indonesia, um, you have the national regulations for Indonesia and you have a certain maximum funding that applies only for the Indonesian part. So there will be you, you, the whole consortium will add up the different uh, funds from the different partners. So it will be later on the funds from Indonesia, for example, from Germany and Switzerland, just to, to mention one example. 
Thank you, Adela. And I think we have time for just a couple more questions. Um, you mentioned, of course, that third partner countries are invited to join. So there's uh, there are two questions. First of all, is this part of the um, selection or the evaluation criteria that this is kind of particularly looked at how successful um, the uh, the applicant is in bringing in third par country partners? And secondly, would the UK be eligible to join a JFS funded consortium? Uh, the UK can join, but they cannot request funding, so they would have to bring their own funding. Um, we And they are also counting for the 2 plus 1 rule as a third partner. So um, all European and all Southeast Asian countries uh, are counted for the 2 plus 1 rule. <clears throat> um, and the first question question was, uh, I, I forgot that one. The question is how important oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, 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 I, I got it. Um, I think the most important thing is um, to the quality of the proposal and the impact. So um, if we have a, a big consortium and we see it's um, diverse and especially also, that's maybe also important for you, um, it's interdisciplinary. That's something that is rated very well. We do not necessarily say like we have many partners, so uh, that's uh, a plus. It, uh, the first thing is that the quality is good. So if you have many good partners, that's of course a good thing, but um, only the number is not really the relevant issue. Good, and I think with this, we are just on time, perfectly time and thank you so much Adela and Wu for this very precise and interesting presentation and uh, we are seeing here that you are already trying to, to connect with each other in the chat segment and we have as I said at the beginning set aside time now for you to get to know each other one to one so uh, I'm just uh, once again I'm thanking Adela and Wu for the presentation as we Yes. Thank we you. Will you share, we will share the slides with everyone and we will also put a recording of today's session on our website. So if you would like to go back to some of the things that you've heard and kind of look at this in detail, it will be on our website um, by tomorrow, I guess. So uh, you can also, of course, always reach out to the GFS team. Adela has been so kind and shared everybody's contact details and do look at their website here it is still uh here um visible on screens so you can reach out to them anytime for any follow-up questions now it is now time for us to make use of this wonderful platform that we have to get to know each other so when i'm telling you um to go i invite you to click on the networking button which you can see on the left hand side of your screen it says networking and you will be prompted by the system to basically uh, get in touch with someone who's in the audience today. You will have three minutes to ex exchange uh, contact details, talk a little bit about your specific research interests, and hopefully already make some uh, contacts and start building consortia. We have dedicated the first 30 minutes to the first call which is climate change. Um, so that would be 4 o'clock to 4.30, and from 4.30 to 5 o'clock, it will be on uh, the food-related call. So if you'd like to just uh, stay where you are right now and until um, the time is up. But of course, my advice would always be to just start networking straight away and see who you'll meet. So I'd like to invite all of you now, just click on, on the networking and then you will be paired with someone who is in the session today. Don't forget, the system will prompt you to share your contact details. And as I said, this is like collecting virtual business cards. So after this event, you will have in your hop-in profile the business cards of everybody that uh, you've met in the session and you can then reach out them afterwards and start building collaboration. So please 
The networking is now live, so just click on it and start networking. So I wish all of you fantastic networking. I'll see you in the session.